DC. I'm your host, Admin Joes, and I'm also here with Morgan's filler, Dusty. He's also our admin in the group. Welcome, Dusty. Hello. <laughs> well, as you can see, we have our differentials up on the board here. Um, we actually have, on the Canto side, Tauros in second place, Polyras in first place. And we have uh, New Zealand Kings in third place in the Kanto division. And in the Lowland side, we have Rapidash at number one. The Toronto Tyranitars at number two. And then just behind them, at, for now, we have four Alligators at, in uh, third place with the plus four differential. Uh, Matt did win his battle, but I did not get to get his stats yet for that week two game. So that could be changing soon. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and go over some games. Uh, Dusty, how did you feel about this week's games? Um, well, I was still pretty sore after my crushing defeat. So uh, <laughs> uh, I think everybody else did pretty well except for, well, I know I got myself spanked. And it looks like. Somebody else actually got a little spanked more than I did, so I shouldn't feel so bad. Uh, you got y'all both got spanked about the same amount. Uh, the tie roars also had a negative five differential. Looks like the mini ores oh, mini got, ores got completely spanked. Actually. Yeah, so, so you... it was kind of a bad week for half of us. <laughs> half, half the battles. Yeah, but nonetheless, all battles are great to see to see how everyone got into those situations. But we'll go ahead and start off with uh, the Kings versus Polyraths. Um, so my opinion on this game is that the Kings played well, but uh, they pulled the trigger on too, too quick on a couple of Mons. And uh, that play where he fire punched the Venusaur then switched out, I feel he should have stayed in fire punch one more time. Could have possibly got the kill and been in a much better position. <laughs> How do you think the Kings played on that side? Um, honestly, my notes for this said it was the most boring match I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
every other turn was an attack, then a switch out, then an attack, then a switch out, then an entry hazard, then a status, then a switch, then a rapid spin, rinse, repeat. Uh, I thought Mega Caesar put in work there at the end, but it was so mind-numbing to watch. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta... uh, but I thought that, in, like in singles, that's the name of the game, is staying one step ahead of your opponent like that. Yeah, you always got to try to keep momentum and keep things moving. But, yeah, it, it can get dawdling at times whenever there's just constant switches. Uh, as I would say, there were some switches that shouldn't have been made, but some switches were absolutely needed. But, what, like I said, with the Kings, with that one switch they made, they made the battle go on 20 minutes longer than it needed to. But... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But in the end, uh, Polyrash were able to get the win. They were behind the eight ball most of the game with all of those switches because uh, the Kings was playing very well around the switches, but he really messed up at the end, and the Polyrash were able to take advantage with uh, Mega Scizor. Mm -hmm. And the next game we'll move on to is PSG versus Minioars. This is uh, the 6-0 of the week. And the spanking the Minioars got. Uh, PSG just had great strategy, and uh, he played perfect. Really, he got the he got the Nihilego in exactly when he needed to. Got the setup after yeah. the kills, and just moved on through. Yeah, there's not a whole lot to talk about. He he got it in. It was faster than most of the other Mons it faced, and it has great defense. So even if it wasn't, it could take those hits. Yeah, it was really bulky, especially with the screens that got up. And uh, for the many years, uh, they just got outplayed. Simple, plain and simple, they just got outplayed on that one. Yeah. So the next game we'll move on to is Gators and Knights. This is your game, so I'll <laughs> let you go first. <laughs> um, stupid me wanted to set up Toxic, uh, let his Dragonite get off a Dragon Dance or two, and then my only out was a Cryogon all with a Focus Sash, and his Dragon Rush made it flinch. So I was, I was done after that, like I knew it was over. I, I know I took the Dragonite out, but I can't even remember how I did it now. I think it might have been Swallow and Quick Attack. Uh, yeah, yeah, Swallow actually outsped somehow, and uh, you used Facade, I believe. Cause that dragon was it was just a health. bad game. Yeah, but at least you yeah, didn't get six <laughs> Um, so my True. advice little is... victories. <laughs> little victories. Yeah, I. Uh, I... but a thing too is I don't have that team anymore because my team has been switched since then. So. Oh yeah, so I'm sure you, your game three was much better. Yes. <laughs> um, my advice on this game, in my opinion, is. The Gators just got a good strat right off the bat. It was a little obvious, but took advantage of uh, the situation. And uh, my advice to you, the Knights, is anytime you see a lead D dancer, assume a sweep is coming. Just take that thing out <laughs> as soon as possible. It's always terrible when you see it just a, a Dragonite just set up on you. Get turn one, and there's hardly anything you can do about it. But... Uh, yeah, it's not just dragon dances, it's quiver dances, it's any of that fun stuff. Yeah, anytime you see a Pokemon that's not just out there to set up hazards, you need to take uh, precautions. But yeah, you would have been a whole lot better off if uh, that flinch didn't happen on your Cryogonal. Yeah, but you know, that's the name of the game anymore. Oh yeah, R RNG is <laughs> a big part of Pokemon. Um, next game we'll move on to is uh, Rapidash versus Tyroars. Uh, I believe uh, that was another negative five game on the Tyroars part. Mm -hmm. um, the Rapidash <laughs> played very well with their defensive minds. Is what I uh, yeah, I actually, my my big notes were uh, that, well, for one, I love Zangoose facade. It's just like Swellow to get that... Uh, that stab facade and then like I noted that like most of the battle was just Metagross versus Gligor and then P Swine versus Vaporeon <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, like it took forever <laughs> my big thing was I don't know why Metagross did not have Ice Punch 
Because since he gets that, it, that would have made it a whole lot better to take on that Gligor. Since he keep he kept it in there so much against it. Yeah. That Gligor did a lot more than I thought it was going to do. Yeah, Gligor Eviolite is very deadly when put in the right hands. Um, but my advice to the Tyroars for that game would be uh, they needed to bring stronger wall breakers to that game. They barely put a dent on those big old defensive mons that the Rapidash brought and it showed. Yeah, I was like, especially that Vaporeon, it didn't go down for a long time. <laughs> uh, all right. So the next game, we'll move on to the Titars versus the Jirachi clones, Morgan's very own team. And I'm gonna start with the Jirachi clones and let Dusty take over for a little bit, and then. I have a big pep talk to give to Morgan after that. So the Dragons <laughs> played well, but they needed to play better around threats. They just let the threats do way too much to them. And evidently that's what probably cost them the game in my opinion. And what do you think? Yeah, um I he, I noticed he brought his Sandstorm lineup which honestly Morgan only had two mons that were hurt by Sandstorm. Mm -hmm. Uh I noticed the Jirachi's Mega Charizard tried to Thunder Punch Gastrodon. Like, not even on a switch, and it just Thunder Punched Gastrodon, and it didn't do anything. So that was like a wasted turn. <laughs> Big misplay on that, yeah. I Other didn't... than that, I thought he was doing uh, good with the uh, Crocodile, like the Moxie Crocodile, there for a bit. Like, I think it took down two Mons, but then Morgan just got it. Yeah, Morgan was pretty much in control of that game. Uh, after that misplay. But uh, my advice to the T-Tars is stop trying to shell smash sweep turn one. <laughs> Cloyster? <laughs> Cloyster. <laughs> yes, he gets that shell smash boost, but his stats are still not as good to just knock out Mons from full turn one. Well, a great a great example is halfway through the game, the Jirachi sent in Crustal, and we're doing pretty good with shell smash for a little bit. Yeah, because they actually got some damage off on a Pokemon that they needed to. And then they were able to capitalize with that Shell Smash to take out the rest of the remaining HP. And that's what... Because I think it only to died to... Um, I think uh, his uh, Crustal only died when Metagross Bullet Punched it. It did. And I'm surprised the Bullet Punch actually did that much. Lucky, lucky. <laughs> Oh, well, Shell Smash did drop those defenses. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, no, because it, didn't it wider, though? I believe I it, it did wider. That's why I actually yeah. couldn't believe it. Bullet Punch did that much. But, yeah, T-Tars, get that Cloyster in the back, and then once you put some damage on the opposing team, then you can Shell Smash sweep anybody you want. But until <laughs> then, I don't want to see Cloyster lead anymore. <laughs> He's and gonna then, start the next battle that way, <laughs> <laughs> just to spite me. Watch it'll work. Um, and then lastly but not leastly, we have uh, the Chartreuse versus the Tauros. I forgot to bring rocks. I did practice battles and I had rocks and I won. I didn't bring rocks. I couldn't play around the Rotom. I lost. Well, I had my note here, a similar note that said you guys were doing the whole hazard setup defog thing that happened a few times but I thought your Flygon put in some work there for a while. I think you got two Dragon Dances huh? Yeah I was able to get two Dragon Dances. Sadly I was already toxic and I brought the Yachi Berry thinking to resist a nice move when at first I was like I should probably get the Fairy Berry instead to resist a Fairy type attack and I didn't and that's what cost me against that Altaria. Altaria was able to get a kill, and I was playing from behind from then. Yeah, that Altaria can take some hits. It really can. It's too bulky. Uh, I was surprised to see a Scarf Katana, or Kartana in there. That was in my notes, too. It was a great way to take on my team. I really didn't expect it. Uh, if you saw when I had uh, Lycanroc in, I was going to Fire Fang then. Because I had outsped it with my calcs by one, mm -hmm. by one uh, s speed step, and when it outsped me, I was just like, "Okay, this is scarfed." <laughs> <laughs> and that was the only thing it could have been. 
but that is the game for this week, and that's why the standings are the way they are. Are we not going to talk about the Blades or Grambles, or have you watched that one yet? I had not watched that one, but if you've watched that one, let me know what you think. Uh, well, uh, uh, they did pretty good about halfway through the match. I thought it kind of got a little wobbly on the Granville's parts. Matt led with a Weavile that used Beat Up, which I usually don't get to see a lot of that. I actually did see that when I was recording the, the battle. Um, and then uh, about halfway through it, it seemed like Granville's might have gotten distracted. He Two times in a row, he tried to Aura Sphere a Bulletproof coma o and it basically got two free moves for Matt, and then Matt ended up just taking charge after that and won the rest of it. Okay. Yeah, I didn't really watch the whole battle, but I did see the Sneasel sit, and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, that was interesting. Beat up, seemed, it kept taking half of everything's HP away. Yeah, it really did. It was doing really good. And uh, also, this is a this is an introduction. Uh, we have Yale taking the spot for the Grand Bulls coach. Because uh, week one, well, this week, week two, Colin was caught cheating against the Blades, so we had to drop him automatically just for admitting to the fact that he cheated. So that's why we had a substitute coach. That's why that battle's so late, and the video is just now getting uploaded. Mm. But uh, now moving on, real quick, we're going to go ahead and... Show y'all the kill leaders for this week. Dusty actually can't see this. But in first place, we have Mega Scizor with nine kills on the season. In second place, we have Nihilego with six kills on the season. And <clears throat> third place, we have Mega Metagross from the uh, Toronto Tyranitars with five kills. So, as you heard from Dusty earlier... Mega Scizor has been putting in work all season, especially this last game with four kills. Uh, Nihilego pretty much got all their their uh, <laughs> stats in one game with that 6-0 sweep. And then Morgan's Mega Metagross, I can't talk, uh, boosted with three more kills this week to get him into third place with those five kills. Yeah, those are... Those are some pretty beefy Pokemon. Beefy, but deadly, as you can see by the stat count. And they're just yeah. taking names and kicking ass. Well, it's going to be interesting to see. I don't know if all of the third week battles have been done yet, but I think most of them have. All third week battles have been done, and I, will, I am getting them up as soon as possible. And uh, hopefully Wednesday, if Morgan is up for it, he will be joining me back uh for weekly recap. If not, I'm sure Dusty will grace us with this presence. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Alright guys, well that's that's all from us from PMLDC. Thank you for watching.